Namaste and welcome back to Mindful Serenity Yoga with Nancy and we're going to continue answering questions from the jar, the jar of trusty questions that were asked to me, uh, asked to other people or just darn good questions to ask and attempt to answer. Now I'm doing this personally for myself because I want to see if I've assimilated all the learning I've done over the last 25 years of my life on my own you want to call it a spiritual journey, though I don't really like to use the word spiritual. I think of it more as a journey into the deeper self, a journey into a deeper understanding. That's what I'll call it. Um, so over the last 25 years, that's what I've been doing. And I've been gaining so much information, so much wisdom from uh, ancient scriptures from all over the world with every religious sect possible, um, listening to wise masters speak, um, Poetry, studying and writing poetry, um, uh, great great arts, great uh, works of literature, uh, philosophers, science, so much. I'm just gobbling it all up, trying to come to some understanding about why uh, we're here and what we're here to do and be. And so that has been my mission for the last 25 years, and it's been getting more and more intense as I get older. So, anyway. This helps me to assimilate how much I've, I've actually picked up and learned. I am no master, and I'm not coming in to you with any, uh, any guise of expertise. There are great masters out there and great teachers out there, and I hope someday that you will find some for yourself. I'm just supplementing in a sense so that I learn. I teach so that I learn, and I learn so that I teach. And if you do get benefit from anything I have to say, I would be very happy. But I can't, you know, propose to know everything because I don't. I am far, far from knowledgeable in that area. I'm far, far from enlightened. So I digress, getting back to the questions in the jar. So I'm going to pull out a question. Oh, I just lost my timer. Just one second. I'll pull out a question and I will attempt to answer it in 10 minutes. And 10 minutes is seems like a lot of time but when you're doing this sometimes it doesn't seem like enough time so it depends it depends on the question so I am going to reach in now and I'm going to go down to the bottom of this trusty jar I think this has to be close to 100 questions if I haven't answered over questions already okay I'm going to press the start button and I'm going to take a deep breath and I'm going to breathe out. And then taking a deep breath always helps to center us and get us out of our head and our ego mind, which always wants to go off with an answer, pretending it knows everything, to the wiser part of ourselves that acknowledges that it knows very little. So whatever comes from me is coming from something other than my mind, <laughs> my own not learning. How do I respond to my kid that is constantly bored? How do I respond to my kid that is constantly bored? I think that is a great question in the sense that um, boredom is probably an epidemic <laughs> in our world today. People don't like being bored. Um, we live in a very busy world where people want to stay busy. They want to stay active. If not physically active, they want to stay mentally active by doing something that prevents them from doing what um, Blaise Pascal in his Ponce's 139 said that was the source of all human suffering. Man can't sit in a room by himself, quietly in a room by himself alone, meaning that we can't sit and just be. It is painful for our cultures today. I say the majority of the human population has a hard time sitting and being just being today without their thumbs attached to something and their eyes attached to something or focusing on the screen in front of them or listening to something we just have a hard time just sitting and being in the moment as it is that boredom is a symptom of that inability to sit as is. A person may be feeling very restless and worried when they begin to sit and notice the thoughts starting to come and notice again when we th talk about our thinking, 60,000 thoughts a day possibly, I said, to be going around in our heads and 80% of them are said to be negative. So 
we're usually sitting in a pool of negativity when we sit with ourselves and our thoughts. And it's very hard to sit there because the mind just wants to be active. It wants to fix everything. We've programmed it to be active, to fix what is broken inside us, you know, to, to tell us what to take from the outside world to make our lives better in here, what to push away so we don't feel discomfort, etc. So the mind is constantly busy doing that. And when we sit quietly, alone, doing nothing, that mind is just chattering away and it can be very almost self-destructive. It can feel like it is overwhelming. So boredom comes with that, having to sit there and listen to our thoughts. We want to be doing something instead, some distracting activity that takes us away from this quiet, or this not quiet mind, but this quiet place in time and space that, you know, we have nothing to do but listen to our minds. So that's where the diversional activity and the need to be active comes in. So when kids, and I don't know what age group this particular person is talking for, but to say um, a young child comes and says, I'm bored, I, I don't know what to do. I think the best thing we can teach our kids then is mindfulness practice. Is a I'm not going to teach them full out meditation, possibly, say, if it's five years and younger. But we can teach them to be mindful. Well, just sit here. Just sit here and notice what your feet are doing. Notice what your, you know, sounds are around you. Notice what your eyes are seeing. Notice what you're picking up, like, you know, through your senses. Get them aware of what their senses are doing and stuff. And that is a really good diversion. It is, a, in a sense, diversional activity. But it is a mindful diversion where we're teaching them a very good skill about just simply being in the moment and experiencing it for what it is. As the kids get older and they get more and more attached to their electronic games and that type of activity, um, and they come to you when they're bored, then you can still try to get them to practice with the mindfulness, but maybe we could start teaching them deep breath awareness or, um, you know, the ability just to sit and be quiet with the mind and to listen to what the mind's saying and to know that it's not who they are, those thoughts and feelings going around in their head that seem so uncomfortable, creating this feeling of boredom and this need to escape from it. Maybe just get them to listen to what's going on in their heads and to objectively observe and, you know, take notes as if they're the reporter in the in a um you know, crime scene or a war zone or something, and just what's going on in there, just record it, observe it, and record it even. And that will help to create a diversional activity in the writing, but also this mindfulness again, this ability to be mindful of what's going on inside and how the body's experiencing and things like that as they observe it. Um, and as the kids get older, like even adult kids, I have adult kids, and they come to me on board, I don't know what to do, and... I don't want to sit with myself and I'm you know I suggest things well if you can't sit quietly what about walking quietly what about mindful meditation and I always attempt to get my kids out into the woods with me when I walk because you know just taking each step and each breath out there is a totally different experience than sitting inside and listening to what's going on in our heads we become aware what the world is like we become aware of the beauty in nature we become aware of that you know, all that awesome stuff. When I say awesome, I mean stuff we can't help but be in awe of out there. A calming effect nature has is amazing. And again, it's an activity. The walking itself is a diversional activity, taking the person away from the area that bored them to a different environment. And at the same time, you're helping them to be more mindful. And of course, there's a distinct difference between mindfulness and meditation. But true meditation is what we do every moment of every day, right? But when we think about meditation in modern terms, we think about that 20 minutes to an hour we allot to our day once or twice a day that we can sit quietly and focus inward um, again on breath or something that takes takes us out of our busy heads and back into our bodies, into our moment. So that um, meditation is something that we can work towards helping our kids gain the, the ability to do, but that is a skill that requires practice. And I know my kids are not, oh no, I see, I mentioned meditation to them and it's hard to be so silly. But active meditation can be something to start with when they are willing. Um, 
to do something with their boredom. An active meditation, one form of active meditation, of course, is yoga. And I have a studio right, you know, <laughs> right here, <laughs> more than willing to come to it. But again, they may resist that until they're ready. I just say, be bored, you know, and I guess when it comes down to it, I'll just say it's okay to be bored. It's good to be bored. Be bored is an opportunity that you can gain a little bit of uh, steps towards self-realization, gain a little bit of peace, gain a little bit of self-knowledge through self-reflection. And when I talk about self-reflection, I'm not talking about their ego selves and how they're going to be popular at school or what courses they're going to take in university or how they're going to do in the job. I'm talking about who they really are beneath all that. And um, so, again, that would be our goal, to get them there. But they will resist. Um, be bored now until you're ready to do something about it, I guess. Suffering can take us to uh, this desire for more. You know, it can help us reflect on how things are working for us in our lives and help us to realize that, you know, the common and normal way of doing things isn't always the way if we're looking for peace or freedom from boredom when we there's a difference between sitting alone and being peaceful and sitting alone and being bored and even though the activities haven't changed the state of mind has so we're trying to teach the kids our kids at whatever age they're at that it's the state of mind that we need to work towards changing and improving not the actions or not what's going on out there. Boredom is just a call to go inward. That's what I like to tell them. It's a call to go inward and, you know, and grow a little bit inside. Oh, they just tell me I'm woo-woo. Most of the times they're not ready to hear it and I don't push it. I wait for them to be ready and I know someday they will be. I see that happening all over the world. I see a lot of bored people out there that constantly have to have their thumbs attached to their electronic devices and eventually there's going to come time where they're going to realize that's not enough or something may happen to the electronic devices and maybe the power in the world will, something will happen we won't have electronic devices who knows and then they'll have to face head on this, this call for peace and serenity that comes through boredom Anyway, that was a big, long spiel. I don't seem to be close to my time. My phone just went off again. Just one second. See where I'm at. And I've got 11 seconds left. Well, thank you for joining me, and I do hope you have an amazing day. Namaste. I'll wait for the timer to go off. See?